Monday Night Raw. WWE Ash Figure Setup Style, let's go. What is going on, guys? Put a light back with another video. And today we have the week in review episode 264, where we go over Raw and SmackDown in a WWE Ash Figure setup style. Starting off with a crazy Monday Night Raw. Mommy is back. We are going to talk about it in a bit. Live, run, live, run. That's all I'm going to say. We're going to talk about it in a bit. We're going to talk about everything. We're going to talk about the matches, the results, the backstage promos, absolutely everything. Uh, so let's do this. Open up the show with an absolute banger promo between Seth Rollins and CM Punk. Seth Rollins, simple as that. He wanted an apology from Punk. I thought for sure we were going to see Drew McIntyre come out, but no, he was not on this Monday Night Raw. Adam Pearce told him to stay home, so this promo was not interrupted. Seth Rollins wanted an apology, and CM Punk obliged. He's like, I apologize. I didn't really want to get in your business, but it's CM Punk. You're never really going to get a true apology. So he kind of bashed Seth Rollins after he mentioned the apology, and he mentioned Seth Rollins' daughter. I was like, ooh, just to, you know, show Seth Rollins how it feels for somebody to mention your family, like Drew has been doing with the bracelet. Uh, this was an amazing promo between the two. I cannot wait for them to fight. I cannot wait for CM Punk and Drew to fight. I cannot wait for CM Punk and John Cena to fight again. I know it's going to happen uh, in Cena's farewell tour. This was an amazing promo to open up the show, and my goodness, I I cannot wait for SummerSlam, dude. I know Punk's going to have something big. I don't even think he's medically cleared yet, but like, I, I know he's going to have something big at SummerSlam. This was an amazing promo to open up the show. Our opening match of the night was a eight. Mr. Main Event, Jay Uso in the opening match, <laughs> going up against Chad Gable. This match was actually really decent. I was looking forward to it, especially post-Money in the Bank. I feel like these guys have had a lot of beef, so to squash the beef was pretty good. We did see the lights go out at the end of the match, similar to the, you know, the, the Wyatt Six, you know, the signature Fiend lights. You know, when the lights go out, and then Jey Uso took advantage of Chad Gable being distracted, and he hit the spear. One, two, three, and no, Jey Uso's music did not hit. He said, a yeet, and dipped up out of the ring. He's like, I'm out, boy. He left Chad Gable in the ring. Chad Gable did make eye contact with, obviously, Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross, who is that new character, which we don't have a name yet. We, just, we don't have a name. I wish we did, all right? I wish we had names of these characters. But Nikki Cross did approach the commentator desk for the third week in a row, and she handed a box this time fully delivered to Pat McAfee the boxes have been made out to Pat McAfee but he hasn't been there they've been being, being given to Michael Cole so Pat McAfee finally got a box from Nikki Cross and you already know the VHS tape was in there she they sent it to the truck they got it played and then Bray Wyatt uh, oh my gosh I said Bray Wyatt Bo Dallas I'm sorry Bo Dallas uh obviously cutting a promo it looks like he's in the Firefly Funhouse when he cuts these promos and he obviously he was just embracing the Uncle Howdy side of things once again and right for a second I was like like, oh, this could start getting really old. Are they going to do this for a fourth week in a row next week with the VHS tape? Oh, I'm like, no. But then they showed Bo Dallas live on the freaking screen. Adam Pierce was going into his office, and dude, Adam Pierce had a heck of a night on this Monday Night Raw. Bro was busy. And then to top off his night, he saw Bo Dallas in his freaking office? Oh my gosh, so to see Bo live action on screen, uh, just it felt amazing. It really did, seeing him in that office. There, no words were exchanged that we, from our point of view, but it was just really cool to see Bo and Adam Pierce on the same screen, and it's just, I don't know. I do not know where Bo's going to be. I love the alter ego, how he's Bo Dallas, and then he's Uncle Howdy. I love that, just like The Fiend used to be. Sheamus wanted a match with Bronson Reed, but Bronson Reed's like, you know what? You can wait. I have your former partner, Butch, tonight. So it was, oh, I'm sorry, Pete Dunne. I'm sorry, Pete Dunne went one. One-on-one -on -one with Bronson Reed. The match was okay. Bronson Reed kind of squashed uh, Pete Dunne. Hit him with the tsunami off the top rope. And then after the match, Bronson Reed was going for another one. But then Sheamus is like, nah, my former brawling brute, that's not happening. I'm running out. I'm going to bro-kick Bronson Reed, get him out of the ring, take him out of the equation. But then Pete Dunne wasn't having it. He pushed Sheamus. And he's like, dude, what are you doing? Uh, I don't know if Pete Dunne like, meant like, hey, I had that. Or if he meant, you screwed us when I was in the brawling brutes. You just dipped up out of here. But Sheamus was injured, man. Because you got to remember, Sheamus left the brawling brutes, and then Ridge and, and Pete Dunne, they just couldn't they couldn't handle it together. So uh, uh, Ridge Holland kind of just left Pete Dunne. So that left him kind of pissed off. But uh, I understand uh, Butch's frustration. But I mean, bro, he helped you out. You would have got another tsunami splash from Brunson Reed. I would have been like, yo, thanks, bro. But um, yeah, this is this was okay. Interesting. Very interesting seeing Bronson just randomly start feuding with Sheamus. Sami Zayn, post Money in the Bank, comes out, and he is still a champion. I'm shocked. If you guys saw the Money in the Bank review, you guys would know that, oh, I thought I thought it was going to be Bronson. 
Johnson. I predicted Sammy, but I was like, no way. And I'm like, oh, somebody's gonna interrupt Sami Zayn. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? And then it's Braun Breaker again. I was like, oh man, WWE, come on, what are you doing? We already saw this match. At first, I was very disappointed because Braun Breaker, he barely said a thing and he just speared Sami Zayn. And it looks like he was about to run around the ring again and spear Sami Zayn again, and he did. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm watching the same thing that happened before Money in the Bank. I was getting so bored. I was like, bro, I feel like I'm watching an episode of Raw from like three weeks ago. I was like, what? Security comes to break it up. And then Ilya Dragunov came out, which I thought was really cool. Dragunov came out to kind of break it up between Braun Breaker and get him out of the equation a little bit uh, and just kind of comfort Sami Zayn, which I thought was really cool. I thought Ricochet was going to return. I really did. I thought Ricochet was going to help out uh, Sami Zayn. But later, it led to a match between Ilya Dragunov and, Bra and Braun Breaker. He wanted a match. He got it one-on-one -on -one between the two. And I'm glad they're kind of redirecting Braun's focus to Ilya. So maybe this could turn into a triple threat match in the future with Sami. I think that would be amazing for the IC title because I do not want to see another one-on-one -on -one between Braun Breaker and Sami Zayn. I'd be so bored. Don't do it, please. So Braun Breaker decides, nah, I don't want to pin Ilya Dragunov. I'll just throw a freaking office chair at his freaking head, Braun Strowman style. I'm like, what on earth? So he gets himself disqualified, loses the match, I might add. So that's a second loss for Braun Breaker within three days. How freaking lame. Um, and then Sammy comes out trying to help him out. And keep in mind, Sammy already got beat up earlier in the show. He got absolutely annihilated. He comes out with taped up ribs just to help out Ilya Dragunov. Similar to how Ilya did him earlier, but it wasn't enough. Braun Breaker destroyed destroyed them both, sent him over the announce desk, and stood on the announce desk like an absolute monster. Do I think they're booking this right? Now, yes. Adding Ilya in the equation, add Ricochet too for a fatal four-way at SummerSlam, please. As long as it's not Sammy versus Braun Breaker again. I'm not saying their match was bad at Money in the Bank, it was just like, ugh, I don't need to see it again. Yeah, so our main event of the show, Dominic and Liv Morgan had to team up to go against Selena Vega and Rey Mysterio of the LWO, right? So, they thought they'd get a little pre-match stretch in backstage. Very interesting interesting predicament Dominic got caught in because his Judgment Day partners uh, caught him stretching with Liv Morgan on a couch in the Judgment Day locker room. I thought it was really funny. J.D. McDonough and Finn Balor's heads popping out like a cartoon from the side. And then Damian Priest is like, so! I was like, oh my gosh, dude. Hilarious backstage segment. I still love this stuff. And to top it off in the end of the night, oh, I can't wait to talk about it. Stay tuned, guys. It was the Judgment Day. Finn Balor, J.D. McDonough, the current tag team champions, and Carlito, who is kind of tagging along with the Judgment Day. I wouldn't say he's officially in the Judgment Day. Day, but it was Carlito as well. They don't get the awesome truth and Braun Strowman. This match started with an absolute, just it started with absolute chaos. <laughs> Braun Strowman came out and then the match got underway. And in the end, we saw freaking Carlito and JD distract Braun and Miz. Not allowed for Finn Balor to take advantage, hit the coup de grace on R Truth and beat R Truth and the rest of the team. I was like, what? I thought for sure this was going to be all day. Awesome Truth and Braun Strowman win the match. They pin Carlito or something. But no, Finn Balor took advantage of a distracted Braun. Braun Strowman and Miz, and he hit the coup de grace, takes the W. W for the Judgment Day, I guess. Carrying Cross, another week goes by, and he's still threatening the New Day. This time, he said in a backstage segment that the New Day is dead, and he continues to try to recruit Xavier Woods. He even mentioned how, yeah, he took the loss to Kingston, but he didn't take the loss to Woods. So he's keeping an open mind with Woods. He wants Woods in the Final Testament. Do I know why? No. But I guess he thinks the New Day is dead. Six-woman tag team match with Caden Carter, Katana Chance, Lyra Valkyria going up against Damage Controls, Dakota Kai, Io Sky, and Irie Sane. The six-man tag team match wasn't half bad. Damage Control take, uh, picks up the victory with the Over the Moon Soul from Io Sky. After the match, we did see Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, but they were accompanied by Sonya Deville. They rushed the ring and they absolutely annihilate Damage Control, giving Damage Control a piece of their mind. And dude, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark are giving Sonya Deville a chance. So I guess Sonya. Sonya is managing uh, Shayna and freaking Zoe, but not only managing, she did a she did a couple moves too, which I was like, whoa. So I guess this is going to be like a three-man group here, which is pretty cool. I can get with it. And they're hyping up Gunther for this SummerSlam match. He's got a matchup against Damian Priest at SummerSlam, and he could very well be the next World Heavyweight Champion. Dude, they had a big video for him talking about his Intercontinental title run, going back to his Walter days. It was a really cool video package that I recommend you watch if you missed it. Uh, and man, they were hyping him up. He could very well be the next World champion. And to top it off, our main event of the show is Selena Vega and Rey Mysterio going up against Dominic and Liv Morgan. I loved this match. I thought this match was a lot of fun seeing Liv and Dominic and Selena and Rey work together. It was just awesome. We saw Dominic pin Rey Mysterio for the first time. 
which was crazy. I didn't know that. I thought for sure Dom had pinned him in the past, but no, this was the first time Dom pinned him, according to the commentators, uh, and it was all because of Liv. Liv distracted the referee with a steel chair and pushed and or kind of made Rey Mysterio lose his balance on the top rope, allowed for Dominic to take advantage, one, two, three, and then Dominic was like, you know what? Screw it, man. I'm going to freaking make out with Liv Morgan in the ring, but before he could... This is my brutality. Here comes Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley came out. She confronts Dom. Liv absolutely bolts. She runs out of the ring. She runs out of the arena. She's like, the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour is on pause. I'm out. <laughs> so I guess Rhea's back from injury. Bro, she was getting married to Buddy Matthews, bro. Expose that. Come on. Um, but yeah, she confronted Dom and the show kind of ends. I wanted some words to be exchanged, but now the show kind of ends. The pop, the pop, the pop was amazing. Oh my gosh, it caught me off guard too. I'm I'm, I'm freaking watching the show and I'm like, oh my god, Rhea Ripley's music. This is amazing. Uh, literally right before things could get real between Liv and Dom. Uh, this was a great way to end the show. Triple H absolutely knocked that one out of the park. That was Monday Night Raw, WWE Asher Vegas setup style. What did you guys think about this episode of Raw? I thought it was a really solid, well put together episode. Uh, some basic stuff, but some good stuff, honestly. Uh, if I had to get rank the show out of 10, I'd give it a solid, probably 7 out of 10. I thought it was a pretty decent show. Uh, and my favorite moment slash match was easily uh, the Rhea Ripley turn. Oh my gosh. The Rhea Ripley return was amazing. It caught me insanely off guard. I absolutely loved it. The Punk Seth promo in the beginning was really good too. Um, but uh, yeah, Rhea Ripley and Dom, they crushed it. Uh, and Liv, of course, obviously. Uh, but yeah, we are going to jump into Friday Night Smackdown. Jumping into the blue brand, we got Smackdown to talk about. There was some good stuff that happened on this show. Kind of repetitive from the past couple weeks, but we're going to talk about it. Smackdown, let's go! Opening up with our brand new Miss Money in the Bank, Miss Tiffany Stratton. No, the briefcase is not pink yet, but she did come out bragging about her win at Money in the Bank. She did get interrupted by Bailey. Bailey threatening Tiffany Stratton not to cash in on her because that means Tiffany Stratton will become the first one to fail to cash in as a woman with the briefcase. This does get interrupted by Nia Jax who comes out because Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton are kind of teaming up, so they kind of take out Bailey, and then here comes Meechin to try to help out Bailey a little bit and then it turns into a match between Nia and Meechin. Nia Jax kind of squashed Meechin in this. It was a pretty basic win. And then we did see Tiffany Stratton think about cashing in. And Nia Jax is like, wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? I got a match against Bailey at SummerSlam. Do not cash in. I do not want to face you at SummerSlam because they're kind of tight. You know what I'm saying? So Tiffany Stratton, she was looking at the referee. She almost cashed in on Bailey, who was literally laid out in the ring. This would have been such an easy win for Tiffany Stratton, but she didn't. She's waiting. Solid way to open up the show. Just keeping us thinking yes there is a briefcase live and in action on the main roster which is obviously the women's money in the bank the men's got thrown in the garbage because Drew McIntyre failed to cash in we jumped into a tag team match that I was actually really looking forward to is Apollo Crews and Mr. Burn the Ships Baron Corbin going up against Birdo and Angel of Legato de Fantasma dude am I the only one that loves this new version of Baron Corbin like he's just being him and it's awesome bro face Corbin and not this goofy happy sad Corbin Corbin garbage. He dude, he's just he's cool, man. This tag team match did not end how I like how would I've liked it. Electro Lopez jumped on the apron, distracted the referee, allowed for Santos Escobar to hit a high knee on Apollo Cruz when he wasn't even in the match, obviously, because it was a tag match. He was on ringside. And then it led to Apollo Cruz getting pinned. I feel like Corbin should not affiliate himself with Apollo Lose. Otherwise, he's gonna lose every match. Apollo Cruz never wins. Do not affiliate yourself with Apollo, man. Corbin needs to go with solo. He needs to take out LW. Uh, I said LW. Oh, like, got enough Fantasma all by himself. He can do it, man. Burn the ships. Keep it up, Corbin. LA Knight had a big announcement. I guess he was the only one that was able to talk to Nick Aldis tonight. I found it really odd how LA Knight comes out of Nick Aldis' office and Piper Niven, Chelsea Green, and Pretty Deadly all needed to speak with Nick Aldis. But LA Knight said he wasn't even there. But then where did LA Knight get this contract? LA Knight came out with a contract, cut an awesome promo, talking about how he's going to get a United States Championship title match at SummerSlam against Logan Paul, because he pinned him in the triple threat Money in the Bank qualifiers match at Madison Square Garden. So he's going to get the opportunity for the title. And my God, I cannot stress this enough. LA Knight needs this win. He needs this win. The United States Championship would look amazing around the waist of LA Knight. Yeah. And I can't wait for Logan Paul to sign that contract. I don't know how Logan's going to sign that contract. Uh, LA Knight's probably going to have to incapacitate him and literally hand sign his uh, hand sign with Logan Paul's hand the freaking contract, because Logan Paul's not going to want to sign that contract. But I can't wait for the match. And I hope we see a new United.
United States champion. Naomi went one-on-one -on -one with Blair Davenport, the new up-and-comer here to SmackDown. Naomi did pick up the victory, kind of with ease. It was sort of just a one, two, three, little roll-up on Blair Davenport, and Naomi picks up the victory. Later backstage, Blair Davenport would attack Naomi, just stating her dominance and, you know, proving that she's going to be a heel here on SmackDown right after Naomi got con congratulated by Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. Um, do I care about Blair Davenport? I mean, she might grow on me, but as of now, I don't know. It's kind of just your classic little heel. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. But Naomi with the victory. It was cool seeing Naomi win. Rematch for the WWE Tag Team Championships. A-Town Down Under, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory had another opportunity to get their titles back against DIY. This tag team match was pretty good. Not as good as last week, but it was still good for a rematch here. Uh, we did see Grayson Waller incidentally hit Austin Theory again. I thought they were going to do the turn, the face turn angle here on this episode of SmackDown where Theory turns face and uh, Grayson Waller maybe uh, fully turns on him or something happens between the two, but it didn't happen. DIY basically just retain their tag team championships with the meat in the middle. Before they do the meat in the middle, they need to do something like this. You know how the Young Bucks do the BTE trigger? Dude, DIY, before they do meat in the middle, they need to do DIY, and then they go for the meat in the middle and get the crowd involved. I think that would be a great idea for DIY to freaking do that. But to see them retain the belts was really cool. Right after the match, freaking Jacob Fatu attacks absolutely everybody. <laughs> the Bloodline want championships. So I swear, Solo sent Jacob Fatu out here just to take out the tag team champions and freaking just make a statement. They want the tag gold. They want the freaking main undisputed WWE championship that Cody Rhodes holds. So they get attacked. And then Solo Sokoa proceeds to cut a promo calling out Cody Rhodes, which Cody Rhodes would come out, where it would be a four-on-one beatdown on Cody Rhodes, man. They got him locked up in the ropes. And you already know Randy Orton, who said earlier in the show that he's going to help out Cody Rhodes. Kevin Owens wasn't here tonight, so Kevin Owens wasn't able to help out. But Randy Orton came out. And the, the numbers game was just too much. It was. You have Jacob Fatu, Tonga Loa, Tama Tonga. They do a triple power on Randy Orton through the freaking announce table, man. Get him out of the equation and force Cody Rhodes to watch it just like this. I'm like, bro, how dirty is that? They ended SmackDown very similar to how they've been ending it with the bloodline on top. Uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know where it goes from here. Sol Sokoa called out Roman Reigns, too. When he comes back, he better acknowledge me. A great way to end the show. The new bloodline, I can get with. I can understand why you wouldn't like it, but I can get with it. I think it's not too bad. Um, but, dude, I just want Randy Orton to turn on Cody Rhodes. I want Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes, and I want Randy Orton as a heel. I really do, but I don't think it could happen anytime soon because they're feuding with the bloodline. But this was still a really solid way to end the show. Let me know your thoughts on SmackDown and Raw in the comment section down below. SmackDown this week, I am going to be giving a solid 6 out of 10. It was an okay episode, but there was some still good stuff. My favorite moment had to have been, honestly, LA Knight announcing he's getting a United States Championship match. I absolutely loved that. I cannot wait for that match at SummerSlam. Let me know your thoughts on both shows down in the comment section down below, and I will see you all next time. Bird Alive is signing out.